Hello, my name is Mark and welcome to I'm Organic Gardening. Now today I want to go over something very important that you should do and I want to do it this ahead of time. It's the end of September and behind me I have some tomato plants that are let's say past their prime and what we need to do is start maybe cleaning up our garden in a couple places. Hopefully everything is still going well for you in your garden but I want to share this with you right now so you consider it and also uh, what I'm going to share with you. Now those tomato plants, again, don't have any green life on them anymore. Their variety is called yellow pear. They make this tiny little yellow tomato that is delicious, and I had an abundance of them this year. And there's still so many on the vine that I didn't get to, but we're gonna save the seeds on those uh, yellow pear tomatoes. Now, what I want you to consider doing, maybe for the first time, or you've been doing this for a long time, is when you clean up your garden, do not remove the roots of those tomato plants or anything in your garden. Just cut it off on the surface and leave it there. Those roots are passageways to that ground, letting air and water in all winter long. And that's very important. And also too, those passageways remain open because of those decaying roots. So the first concern that a lot of people have is with those roots that are in the ground, aren't they gonna get in the way for next year? Absolutely not. They're going to help you. And the reason why they're gonna help you because they're gonna slowly decay. That's all good organic material that the bacteria and the fungi are gonna eat. And then the nematodes and the protozoa are gonna come along. These are all good microbes in the ground that help you build your soil. And that's how you get healthy food and healthy plants because those leftover roots in the ground have given those passageways to air. Now, the next thing that you're gonna be inviting in that you might have seen in your garden is worms. Worms do not like compact soil. So why are you going to take something that's been in the ground for the last, let's say, anywhere from three to five months, those roots, and remove them? You're gonna inject more air into the soil, you're gonna kill off the microbes, and you're not gonna invite worms to your garden. Now, this is true to whether you're growing in sand, silt, and clay in the garden, or <clears throat> you are, let's say, using a raised bed. Now you can see the leftover vines of all those yellow pear tomatoes that we had left over. Now this was such a good year for me growing tomatoes because we had so much rain and it just expanded and made all those microbes work double time in growing these beautiful vines and I probably picked over let's say uh, 500 to 1,000 of yellow pear. I lost count and these are only about let's say I think I got uh, let's see, two, four, six, eight, eight plants here. And you can see how many yellow pear are still left over. But our consideration now is the ground that we have below here. I have some leaf mold on the ground that kept them moist and didn't need it, but you never know what the season is going to be. But you can see how we have this, again, this abundance of yellow pear. And I gotta show you this other thing too. It's gonna be in the shade, but this is how easy it is to grow tomato plants. Here we are on the other side of the trellis, on the back side of, if you want to call that, and here's a yellow pear. Now, I got the yellow pear to start uh, producing early in the season. And the plants were so big that I had to cut some of the foliage off in the back so I can reach in there and harvest all those yellow pear. Now, what you see on the ground here is I just left those, uh, let's say, yellow pear on the ground, and those are all volunteer yellow pear tomato plants. That green that you're seeing there. So let's even get closer. This is just insane. Look at all those volunteer yellow pear tomato plants. I basically, and they're growing in leaf mold. All this here that you see is beautiful. I'm gonna say they're about four to five inches tall of all beautiful yellow pear tomato plants. And there's probably at least, again, a thousand of them growing back here. What perfect conditions of all these yellow pear falling down and growing in my leaf mold. That's how easy and quick it is. Didn't do anything to them. Nice, green, and healthy. All the minerals and nutrients are there because the microbes are feeding and breaking down all that material and giving to them. The only way your plant is getting nutrients is microbes. Microbes deliver and break down all the things that are in your soil and deliver to your plant. In organic gardening, that's the only way. Chemical fertilizer, that gives it directly to the plant and you can overdo it, that's why you can burn plants out. 
but in organic gardening, it's all about microbes. So again, what I'm suggesting you to do, and is very important, and is gonna grow that beautiful soil for you for your lifetime of your garden, is to keep the rest of the roots in the ground here. Here we have the top of the tomato plant of yellow pear. And again, yellow pear is this beautiful yellow tomato pear shaped and it's just gorgeous and great to eat now these i can save for seeds which i'm going to do i actually uh, take a lot of these and save them over winter and give them in the community gardens for people that do not have the money to buy seeds and they always appreciate me donating and so all these yellow pears that are going to be left over on this we're going to save the seeds for and help spread and give generously to other people and you by watching my channel helps me uh, make a little money so I can do this and actually pass it forward to other people so back to the roots that we got in the ground here so now we can see how thick this one plant is I'm gonna remove this aluminum tie that I started with that it actually brings it to the ground just a small one here and I'm going to cut away with just some pruning shears just this top of the foliage so I can get in here and show you how thick and here we have some new growth actually on the bottom again cut some of this away there's probably I don't know say five to seven main stems here and here's a, the largest one in the middle here all organically grown I don't use any kind of extra things on the ground here and again just some good old-fashioned leaf mold that I put down early in the spring when I transplanted the plants right directly in the ground here. Now, also, I'm going to do this. I'm actually going to remove this for you. I'm going to show you the roots on this plant because, again, this was just a little bit of a raised mound bed of just soil. I don't have any borders around it, no cardboard boxes, no wood, no nothing. And this is just something I want to show you here because I'm always curious about it too. I'm just going to pull this out because I can get this to this root here slowly. Now I'm going to break off a lot of roots, but I want to show you in this demonstration. Oh, see, most of the roots here these, these big white ones here are surface roots and they love to go inside this leaf mold. That's why mulching is so important and to leave everything alone. But now here you can see how, see I'm breaking it, I'm moving the soil actually all the way out there or mulch I should say, use the correct words. Now, oh, this thing is huge. No wonder they did so well. Now, again, you're not supposed to do this, but I want to show you if all these roots are going out in different directions here. Now, let's get this better down. And you can see here that how well this tomato plant root did. Look at this. This is insane. How good is that? Look at this. Oh, nice. Just, and this is a yellow pear variety. This is not a beefsteak variety or nothing else either. And now you can see how well those roots did because I don't disturb my soil, a no-till situation. And some of these roots, I'm going back underneath the camera, like this one here. Now, you can see this is probably one foot long, two feet long, almost three feet long here. Now, I'm just gonna just pull this out of the way. And you can see, this is my roots. Now, if we leave them in the ground, think of all that organic matter that's there. All that beautiful organic matter that's going to die over winter. And what it is, and I want to share with you, all those microbes have been living around this space. Now, I've disturbed this, and I, that's why I don't want you to do it. I just want you to cut off the top of the plant and leave it there. And it will decay over winter. You have anywhere from seven to eight months in my area for this to break down in the ground. But if you're feeding your soil all this organic matter that's in the ground, and all those microbes made passageways over all that time, how beautiful is that? Think about the engineering that goes into this all the stuff that you see here that is just constantly making nature stronger and stronger and what it is I never had blight this year we had three major tropical storms this year in my area with 
high amount of rain, high amount of, uh, let's say, lack of, lack of sunlight, and these things still do good and produce all these beautiful roots. Now, this is just proof to you that nature can take care of itself. Is nature perfect? No. You're going to have problems left and right sometimes, and you can never figure out why because you're disturbing the soil too much and it's all about microbes living in your soil. So consider this, it is a great way to understand it. If you have any questions, please write to me because I'm here to help you and I'm here to share with you all this knowledge that I have over the years. And I've made mistakes easily. And I says, I've been doing this for now for over 10 years growing organically on my farm. And it's easy to understand because it's how it is taught to you and how I deliver that information to you that you can understand it and actually go teach somebody else this beautiful thing. And look at just the roots that continue you know, when I'm picking this plant up. Just unbelievable. So I want to show you this great example here. I have it actually hanging off my trellis. My trellis is about uh, four feet tall. It's, it's a cattle panel. And we're just going to go right down the line here. And sorry about the clicking noise. It's just my camera mount. And you can see how beautiful those roots are. Sorry about the wind and how deep they go in the soil or spread out in the soil. And I want to talk about roots and disease for a second here too. This whole section here that you see, the reason why I don't get that many diseases in my garden on this beautiful root system, because any of these roots here, like this one that you see here, I have a beneficial fungi, a mycorrhizal fungi in the soil. And what it does, it invades each cell of this root here on a very microscopic level. You would have to look at it in a microscope about 400 mount of glucation to see the cells in the root. So this fungi, say my finger here is a fungi, goes into each one of those cells and grows from that outwards so if it's invaded the cell of the root nothing else can invade that cell because it has a good fungi in there protecting it and that's what the whole secret is about growing healthy plants and healthy soil because if you have everything working for you those bacteria and fungi are going to live outside here the fungi is going to invade the root take over those cells and use that as a host to grow more fungi out in the soil to get nutrients and bring them back to the root but also it's protecting the root from other bad bacteria just amazing come on now that is really some cool stuff that's why i'm like interested in all this as a farmer and a gardener is because it does work now i also want to go down here and show you something let's move this down sorry for the clicking noise now you can see here what's this a clot of dirt? No. This is what happens when you build soil. This is what is a huge soil aggregate. And see, that's why you don't want to disturb everything. Inside here are billions of bacteria and fungi and good nematodes and good protozoa living inside this aggregate here. And this is grown. You can see it's attached to the root and gone through it. And everything is perfectly in there. And a lot of people put biochar in here. But nature makes its own biochar in soil aggregates. So you don't have to use biochar in your garden. If you want to, you can. There's a lot of research either way. But actually what this is, is all formed. And I will break this open like so. And you can see how there's passageways in there and good healthy soil and just easy to make everything beautiful in that root that you see here let's get a better close-up is going right down the middle of that inside there and actually supporting it and what it's all bind together is something called glomalin and that binds all those particles together and is just adorable again awesome nature and this is how it works so if you want to learn more stay uh, tuned to my channel we're going to go over cover cropping in a little bit but the most important thing and the valuable thing now is to leave those roots in the ground because this is what it made this beautiful soil aggregate from those roots and if you rip them out of the ground and i just did this so i can show you a demonstration and this is what it's doing and is actually working for you 
I want to thank you so very much for watching today's video. I actually don't give the seeds away. I actually give the yellow pear away and then I teach how to people how to save seeds at the same time. So I'll give each person 10 of these yellow pear uh, tomatoes and I will show them how to cut it open and save them in their basement and it's just an easy process and I'll be sharing that also with a video with you in the future too. Thank you for watching and give it a thumbs up and share with other people. To, uh, the best thing about gardening is also sharing what you know with other people. So enjoy, have a great day and happy gardening.